John, for all the folks out there in the avionics industry, you've got to be one of their favorite people at this point because all of a sudden it's retrofitville. <laughs> Yeah, the market is certainly conducive to the retrofit market space. So we see these kind of downturns. A lot of people spend a lot of time upgrading their aircraft. Plays really well for us right now. I can't think of any company that has uh, energized the retrofit uh, panel market in, as, in so many years as, as has Aspen. But there's news. Can you talk about what's new at Aspen? Probably our biggest announcement is that we were chosen by Diamond to be on the DA-20 aircraft. Uh, for a lot of reasons, it makes us very proud. First of all, how strong Diamond's position is in the market space. And the fact that they chose ours for that particular class of aircraft, uh, both from a price performance aspect, but also uh, the wide acceptance of that aircraft in the training school. So we're quite excited about that. Um, that was one of the biggest things that probably that we've had since we've really come on board here is to have that kind of uh, validation from an OEM of that type. Um, in addition, uh, we're expanding our AML. Um, this is our third expansion to the P Barons, the larger aircraft as we do. We continue to move that AML towards the Class Three environment as we continue to add more and more aircraft to that. Um, that provides us a kind of an exciting environment as we get into bigger aircraft, be able to take advantage of the broader multiple tube displays. Uh, as you know, our MFD will be certified in the second quarter of next year. So those two announcements are quite exciting for us, especially in this world. It creates a broader range of retrofit opportunities for us as well. Well, obviously, all the excitement has been built up around the PFD, but the PFD is not going to be a solo production product for very long. There is more to come. Our MFD product, uh, which which we have here at the show, and uh, provides us the ability to add more glass space, that then therefore then we can add things of the terrain, traffic, and our hazard awareness products uh, to go along with that. And that product will be certified in the second quarter of 2009. We're very excited about that, that because that provides uh, the capability for those that have the PFDs to add the MFD from a modular standpoint as well. And for those that are purchasing their PFDs, uh, the ability to prepare for the MFD when it becomes available. We're hearing from folks in the field that the retrofit uh, aspect, at least for those panels that weren't a nightmare to begin with, is actually proceeding pretty smoothly. What kind of feedback are you getting right now? We're getting mostly positive feedback. Um, you know, anytime you introduce a new product, there's a lot of learning curve, and we're pretty much through that learning curve in terms of installations. Um, we have a wide range of aircraft. We have uh, a, a Baron that's a 1959 Baron. Uh, we have airplanes that are extra 300s. Uh, we have pipers, so we're learning a lot, and as that learning curve is going on, the cost of installations are going down and the speed at which they're going down, and also the more acceptance it is by a lot of our dealers who are learning to be able to install. So that learning curve is progressing quite quickly right now. Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. Now you're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WAS GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WAS gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navbase. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. What does 2009 look like for all things Aspen? 2009 is very exciting for us. I know we're in a tough market, and we really have to understand that uh, we have to lower expectations in that market. But with the introduction of our MFD product, the introduction of our ATP product, uh, the diamond coming into play, our Liberty contract, uh, we see a pretty good growth year. Maybe not as much as we thought so six months or three months ago, but we still are pretty bullish on 2009 in the retrofit market and actually quite excited about it. What other OEM activity might we see? Is there something in the offing, do you think? <laughs> yes, we are in discussions with uh, different OEMs, and we'll continue to pursue that market space to find those niches where our, our platform fits well and provides value to our customers. So, you know, I'd say stay tuned. Where are you finding the best implementations coming from? I mean, is there a segment of the industry at this point where you're seeing particularly aggressive adoption? You know, it's it, we, we actually have been looking at that, trying to find if there are any trends. Um, we have a lot of Bonanza installations. We have a lot of Cessna installations, a lot of Pipers. I don't see any real pattern, but I do see a pattern uh, for those people that are wanting to upgrade their aircraft um, with the ability to, whether it be upgrading their GPS and glass cockpit as a combination, to take advantage of the GPS as steering or things of that nature. We see a lot of people upgrading their aircraft, not just in our unit itself, but the other peripheral units are around it. But to be honest, we've not really seen any kind of pattern to the type of aircraft or the type of installs that are out there. It's very wide ranging.
Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. Ultimately, when you have this kind of inventiveness in, in a company and a product line, you have to ask the ultimate question, what's next? <laughs> we are clearly not a one-trick pony. I mean, we're clearly going to be expanding our product line. Um, we need to get our initial products out. We need to get MFD capabilities out there. And we're looking forward to expanding our product line to become a full-fledged avionics producer. Any, uh, any real tricks along the way? Anything that you found out that was more difficult than you envisioned or something that really surprised you? I wouldn't say it surprised us, but we certainly had our issues with initial installations, um, understanding all the different power characteristics of airplanes, um, and understanding how the system would be used. Uh, we've been very fortunate with the initial demand being so strong that our learning cu curve was swift. And, and in fact, we made some modifications to, uh, to our unit in a version 1.1 unit uh, to take advantage of things. Um, our unit was a little bit hot when it first came out the door because the way we designed, the way the heat dissipated, we made some modifications. Uh, to that because of the, the response of customers saying the unit was just too hot and we were modified some of the cooling stuff. So not surprises, you never know where they're going to come from but you know you're going to have issues with the introduction of the product. We're through those now and uh, quite pleased with the progress right now. Well congratulations on all your successes so far and we're really looking forward to seeing what's next.